Hey everyone, hope you're keeping well. So uh, just sat down with Miko Von Herzen, of course with the Von Herzen brothers, to speak about the band's brand new album, Red Alert in the Blue Forest. Um, we spoke about you know tracks in the album, the recording of it, um, writing during lockdown, the upcoming tour that they're coming hit in the UK next month in May, uh, their support at band for the tour at Etherfield, I saw a Planet Rock Winter's End Festival back in the uh, end of February, uh, who were brilliant, by the way. If you've not heard of Ethan go check them out. And you can check everything else that Miko and I had to say right now. And I'm joined by Miko of Von Herzen Brothers. How are you keeping, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Glad to hear it, man. Up, uh, the up north is finally melting a little bit here. so yeah, Finally getting a bit of sunshine. Yeah. It's <laughs> been a long winter. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> So you guys recently released uh, your new album, Red Alert, in the Blue Forest. What a great album it is, man. You must be like really happy with how people are responding to it already. Mm -hmm. The feedback has been really, really good and encouraging. And, you know, we knew that when we are, while doing it, we, we kind of knew that we are kind of taking a little bit of a risk, you know, because we're uh, skipping the rockier songs and, and, and concentrating on the kind of like the vibe wise to a kind of different energy but it paid off you know people have really found it very somehow uh, you know the the new elements that we were kind of like uh trying to incorporate into the kind of like the, the music they are they are resonating well with people so happy yeah. that's good man so like you say you have got like sort of you know you sort of not abandoned it because there are some rocky songs on the album as well but yeah, sure. you've added those other those other elements too was that just a conscious decision to try something different or was it just the way it came out when you guys sat down to write i think it was a mixture of both because we have been like war is over and new day rising we're very kind of like forward forward kicking rock albums you know and then uh, when we started writing this we kind of like we're discussing that you know let's like let's not avoid uh like writing also keeping in mind that we could also do some acoustic parts or acoustic songs on this album and then you know the pandemic hit and we kind of ended up in a situation where we were not we were not like writing songs uh, from the same kind of location as before from a rock band perspective we were kind of like ind individually scattered here and i was in india and my brothers were here and you know uh, with the social distancing and everything, you know, we just ended up like being in nature and writing songs somehow like, you know, yeah. on our own. And, you know, the, the, the vibe was more like, okay, let's be, let's be quiet and, you know, like use our string instruments in a kind of like soothing way more than like, let's ban them, you know, like, so it's a different vibe. And then uh, when we came together, uh, when I came back from India and we listened to what we had, we had maybe 30 songs. Wow. And we kind of like we kind of realize that okay you know we have this kind of like old school vhb stuff that is kind of very forward kicking and rocky and riffy and all that but then we have a lot of this kind of like very atmospheric stuff that we felt like okay maybe it's time for this because kind of like you know that's kind of what we wanted to do this time and and then we skipped everything else and started concentrating on that and then that's how kind of like the the process went oh, cool so yeah. in terms of the recording side of things, did you manage to get together in the studio or did you have to sort of go in, in stages and such because of lockdown or? <laughs> in the end, we managed to be in the studio together. It was just that everything got postponed because of the pandemic, you know. Oh, it yeah. took us four and a half years to do this. It kind of, you know, because the previous album came out, I think, November 2017. So it's been a, it's been a while, you know. And if if it would have been different, like, if the world would have been more normal, I think we'd, we would have already like released this earlier, maybe a year earlier. But yeah. now it was kind of like it just everything somehow got postponed because the touring was difficult to arrange. And we were just, you know, it was just like, you know, talking to the agents abroad, they were saying that don't do anything before 2023. You know, the world is not going to be ready for, you know, for touring like that on, on that scale. So. So it was just like a conscious decision that, okay, now we have the time and we have like this idea of a double vinyl, whatever, you know, <laughs> thing. And then we just played along and, and kept, kept kind of like that. We kind of consumed that time to our benefit, I feel, because then we, we were able to kind of like release 70 minutes of, of kind of cool stuff. So that's cool, man. 
Do you think, like, because you wrote it in that way, with obviously taking into context, you know, happened to, as you say, sort of write it through COVID times, that that is a running theme throughout the lyrically or as well? Or would you just say it was just, it, it was there other themes running in? All well, the the it seems like an album that's a, a really cohesive piece, if you know what I mean, yeah. rather than just a collection of songs. Yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, the pandemic and everything that happened because of that, you know, people being afraid of people feeling loss, you know, and, and seeing loss everywhere. And, and somehow re how, how we responded to the fact that the world is going nuts and people are just like taking sides and fighting with each other, like opinions are getting somehow rougher and, you know, people are really like, drawing the opposites further away from each other it was like that and then the idea of you know being a Finn and 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 spending a lot of time in the forest that was actually actually something that we have felt right that we should write about but now somehow those things came together you okay. know because it was kind of like cohesively came together because it was just like so tangible that when people were not able to travel, you know, people started to look around, you know, what do we have here in Finland? Okay, we have this nature and we have all these kind of precious things. Are we looking after those things? And, and it was not really like a climate, you know, you know, uh, change album, but it was actually just like, you know, the forests that we know are changing and we are losing all these species and how we are as as human beings yes, human how we are how we are dealing with all this loss and how we are you know how does it feel to be and witness this thing you know and then with the pandemic you know losing your dearest and nearest ones you know and and not being able to see your parents for example and you yeah. know your your kids are not able to see their grandparents those kind of situations one would never think that that could happen you know and no, then this when it happened, and then when it happened, it just like gave us so much perspective to the to the kind of like what is the what is the stuff that we want to talk about now, you know, on this album. And then that kind of somehow gelled well together, and uh, yeah. So there's a lot of like I think it's definitely a child of its time, you know. It's it's mm -hmm. it's a kind of you know it deals with that all that stuff that happened to us as you know as humans uh, during the pandemic and it's kind of still going on you know so. oh yeah it's still there i think this is the thing i think this is like, like i said this is definitely a sort of a different side to you guys um, yeah. on the album um i've been a fan of you guys for quite a while now and obviously in, in some previous interviews i've seen you've discussed obviously you know your dad bringing home sort of queen and rainbow albums and stuff yeah. like that um yeah. when you were growing up and i think you know so arguably Queen have always gone off their own way in each album you know Sheer Heart Attack isn't the same as Night at the Opera which isn't the exactly. same as Day at the Races so exactly and those are kind of like our heroes those those bands that are somehow able to I wouldn't say reinvent themselves but somehow like able to kind of challenge themselves and mm -hmm. set the bar a little bit higher and maybe you know go down these paths that you can see that okay there's maybe something really cool down there and and but so many bands are just like no but we have our audience and we keep on repeating what we do and uh, we keep our audience and we keep our livelihoods like yeah. that you know and like in on the in, in the metal scene it's very much like that oh, you definitely, know yeah yeah so we don't I, I guess because we are not so successful we feel like you know we can explore you know <laughs> free we are free from that you know yeah, and we yeah, are no, that's all yeah we're free to do and and i think that queen was kind of like also always so somehow you know they they were adventurous in that sense and we want to be like that you know yeah and i think you are i mean I think every album that you've done has been gone down a different path and i just say yeah. uh, i say yeah. this new album is a continuation of that and yeah. i think and my brother already said that now when we did this you know the next album has to be like you know stadium size like Bon Jovi rock, you know. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know about that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but speaking of good albums, um, you know, good albums being made in this sort of time period, I saw you, uh, one of uh, one of my favorite albums of last year. You put up a video for, which was uh, the Wild Hearts and Twenty First Century Love Songs. That was a great Perfect record. Album. So cool. Yeah. And 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 that's you know also like, 
uh, Andy Farrell, their manager, sent it to me like just before they released it and asked oh, cool. if, if I could if I could like say something about the album. And I listened to it and I was like, that is that is exactly like they do it in their punk rock, you know, mm. but they're very adventurous. They're very they are not they are not like bound by some kind of weird, you know, they if they want to try out things they do. And I love that about them. You know, I, I just like Ginger, you know, he's a wacko. Everybody knows he's a wacko, but he's such a genius songwriter. Oh, really. completely. Well, the best I mean, I, just like the best there is like he is so his melodies and his riffs and he he's such a great guy i love him and he's like he's he's one of my heroes and i i wish him always well and i'm so worried about him because he's struggling with stuff yeah but, he struggles with his mental health yeah, and stuff you know, and i think he's you know he's been yeah. open about that but he's been open about that and he's he's a he's a darling you know he is. And like I say, I think like the, the last two albums, especially since obviously Danny came back in the fall, I think Renaissance Men and 21st Century Love Songs, I think it's the two of the best they've written, to be honest. But, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, they're totally like, you know, CJ, they are top of, on, the, on top of the game, really. And it's a pity that they can't like overcome that stuff and keep on touring. And, you know, and uh, I don't know what the issue is at, at the moment, but I just hope that they can, you know, continue. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm just a fan. I just hope they continue. Yeah, to make yeah it. exactly. Me too. Me too. That's what I hope for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go back to yourselves, obviously. That's what I like about you guys. You know, you go off and explore and you're not, you know, not scared to, to try things. And you don't get me wrong. There's those bands I adore that have their sound and, and that's still, I mean, I love ACDC. You know, yeah. they, they very much stick to their thing. But equally, yeah. I love bands like yourself who go off and explore and, you know, bands like Catatonia and Tool and yeah. all that yeah. more, I guess, stereotypically more progressive side. But it's yeah. just music at the end of the day and i think there's nothing wrong with expanding those horizons and any day you know you guys know what's right for you and what's not yeah and you know the the older you get and the more you have like miles behind you and and albums made and all that you just start to kind of like see us you, you start to see yourself also like okay this is going to be my legacy you know <laughs> so what do i want to leave behind i don't want to I don't want to leave behind like some kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, they had this one thing. I want to leave behind like a treasure chest, you know, so that people who then maybe find the band at some, I don't know, point of their lives, they are going to go like, wow, this. They had so many sides to them, and they were not afraid to kind of like portray that. And and I feel that that's kind of like my kind of mission in life, just to kind of challenge challenge the idea of musically what we are about you know and if there's one hit and if there's something that we do like some kind of like you know that goes really well we are not trying to repeat that we are trying no. to do something else as well as we did that you know so that's okay. always been like the key thing for us and then i think that red alert in the blue forest as an album is really kind of mature and also i feel like it's you know, it's, I don't know if there's many bands that can say that when they come to album number eight, that they are so, you know, they can really stand behind it and say that this is the best album to date. Yeah. You know, but I, I think that that feeling at least, I don't know if it's true, but that feeling at least is very much there in the band that we did it, you know, we kind of like were able to challenge ourselves yeah. and we came up with something new. Yeah. It's funny you say that, just because, just from obviously a listener and a fan's point of view, um, a mate of mine, um, he heard the album before I did, my mate Tony, he, my mate Tick, he, um, and he messaged me and he texted me like, Lee, you need to go listen to this because he knows I love you guys. You okay. know, it feels like a real progression. It feels like a real sort of step up the ladder, which is weird considering how long we've been a fan of them. Sort of yeah. He yeah. said, but you need to listen to it. So I did, uh, you know, I went out and grabbed the album and uh, Tick's just, a, uh, he, he loves his progress side of things. So like, when I knew he was on about that, I, I kind of gathered what way it might have been compared to the more rocky side of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think he's right, man. And I think you're right. I think what you set out to achieve, you've done, I think is that step forward. I yeah. think it's uh, stepping not away from what you've done previously, but you know, you say just traveling down that different avenue, as it were. Right. I think it's really yeah. right. I, I, I took, uh, I don't know why I did it, but I just like went back and I listened to War Is Over now after four years, five years oh. of it, its release. And I was just kind of like also myself, I was a little bit like perplexed and astounded by the different energy on that mm -hmm. album and on this new one. So I think that musically, you know, those kind of 
that melodic side of us and all that is is still there it's it's very much the same you know mm. we write melodies in a certain way and we do stuff you know with the harmonies and all that you know there's a lot of backing vocal and all that stuff but the energy of the of the music is very different this is kind of like uh, you know kind of like on in a standstill witnessing what's going on around you know and just like looking around in a vast sense and then whereas war is always just was just like fuck let's go and do it you know yeah, straight and, you know straight so that is that is something that i feel that is the the key difference actually between this and 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 the previous two albums but yeah i mean i just hope that fans are, have the patience to actually listen to it a couple of times because I was talking to a German reporter and, and he was saying he's a very huge fan of, of, of our band. Mm. And he said that he felt with the first two listens that this is a disappointment. Oh. And then he listened to it more. And when he came to number five, spin number five, it was like, this is actually a really good album. And then he told me that he has listened to the album before he called me 30 times. And he wow. thinks it's the best album we've ever done. So that's kind of like, you have to kind of like, I, I hope that our fans have that, that, okay, you know, it might sound a little bit maybe disappointing because that certain energy is not there. Yeah. But if you, if you keep on spinning it and if you keep on listening to it like a couple of times, you start to get the hang of it, you know? And I think, there's a, I think yeah. there are certain albums that, there's certain albums that you listen to on first go and bang it hits you and it tends to be the more heavier side things but with this album we should be more layers up and going down a different avenue and stuff like you say i think there are certain albums i mean there's certainly certain albums that i've listened to in the past where on first listen i've gone oh i don't know but i kept listening to it because they were a band yeah. i liked anyway and yeah, i think there the are certain like, albums that there has really... to be something in it that keeps your you know yeah, keeps, of course. Your, keeps you hooked like for example wild hearts new album the, you know that was pretty much like the first list first listen i was just like yeah what the fuck this is cool <laughs> yeah. you know you know it was like that but then there are like then there are like albums that you just like keep on going back to like some of the portis head stuff and some of the massive attack stuff yeah. that i really like you know for uh, with the first is you're just like i don't know you know well i was I, like that with um david bowie's earthly when he released yes. that the yeah. first time I listened to that, I was sort of like, I, I'm not sure I quite get this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now it's like definitely up there with sort of my top three Bowie albums. I absolutely love yeah, that yeah. record. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, you know, as an artist, it's, it's, it's really kind of rewarding to, to see that people then, you know, they react in a certain way because it's always really difficult to come up with something new and interesting to yourself, you know, as an artist. Yeah. You know, it, because it's like putting up an exhibition, and if you keep on repeating the same paintings, it's it's not gonna, you know, no. people are just going to go like, oh, oh, it's the same again, you know, yeah. and then you know. But uh, we've talked about shows that actually come to the UK next month. Yeah, and over yeah. to the. Yeah. yeah, that is a very cool thing. Yeah, I'm very excited about that because it's been, it's been a long time, and mm. and. Uh, uh, and also we usually tour there when it's like in the middle of winter, you know, December. Yeah. So this is going to be great. It's going to be warm and it's going to be nice <laughs> tour there. And, and obviously, you know, uh, the last tour we did there was December 2017 when the album came, War is Over came out mm -hmm. of November. And I was so fucking like absolutely like devastatingly sick the whole tour oh, no. <laughs> and i could my, my pipes were gone and i was just like you know some kind of influence or whatever yeah and i was struggling and and i was it it left me personally with this feeling that i could have done so much better if i was like yeah you know, if you were healthy. healthy yeah so now returning back i, I feel like yeah yeah i'm coming i'm like healthy i'm feeling great and you know <laughs> want to show that you know the band is i'm not the weakest link of the band <laughs> <laughs> you got great support by the wells with etherfield they're brilliant I yeah first caught them uh winter's end festival come the banner rocks winter's end festival I was down there uh yeah. end of february and i hadn't heard them before 
Yeah. Um, I think they were opening the day on the Sunday, but they were brilliant. I really, really enjoyed Young them. lads with the good energy and they really wanted to be on tour with us. So that was like, okay, let's do it, you know, because I, I love that, you know, having that young talent with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we were given a chance by the Wild Hearts when we were just like try, trying to break into the UK market. And there was, Ginger called me up and said, can you come and do this tour with us? And no, so I, I, I really like, it's, it's really nice to get to like help help these youngsters, you know, and, and, and give them enough time on stage so that they can actually like get a good gig, you know, every night. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, they're a great band. I said I hadn't heard them before, before Winners End, but they, you could see people, you know, it was early morning, it was the last day of the festival. There was a, a few hungovers in the crowd and everybody sort of slowly creeping in and yeah. uh, um, as they started off, but by the end of their set, you could, they, you know, they woke everyone up. They were absolutely yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like them, and 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 uh, yeah, I was very happy to hear that uh, a manager over there was able to to lock this this thing in. So, yeah, very that's happy. great, man. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you up at the London date. So, um, looking forward to seeing okay, you. Super, again, super, super, yeah. Cool. So, where uh, do, where are you at, man? I'm I'm in Bury St Edmunds. So, last time I saw you was when you played Norwich at the Waterfront. Okay. Uh, a few years back, so I'm about forty five minutes away from Norwich, sort of place. But okay, but well, you're coming down to London. Yeah, yeah, come down to them for the show. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy to come over there and meet everybody. It's been a while, you know. I think we were there like uh, 2018, maybe playing one festival or something. No, you did Rambling Man. No, too, actually, no. No, Rambling Man, we did. Did we Rambling? Maybe we did Rambling Man. That's yeah, it. Rambling Man, you did in 2018, 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That must have been it. Yeah. 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 So I'm hoping that I, I I guess this year we are not coming to play any festivals, but maybe next year we can come again to do a rambling now or Steel House or something like that. Yeah, that yeah, would be cool. So what's the rest of the year hang out? You know, what what are the rest of the plans for the, the remainder of the year? Such. Oh, uh, we are we are touring now. We have a few gigs here in Finland now before the UK tour, and then um, then we do some festival dates. Then nice. we have some some uh, scandinavian and holland gigs coming in the early spring oh, cool. and then uh, october we are again touring in finland and raising money for whatever comes in november and december because that's when we are trying to to get like a mainland europe tour oh nice booked. so yeah but it could be also that like or this year is gonna i hope that we can do some like mainland europe and maybe even come for that, those kind of uh you know the december gigs in in the uk where you have all those prog fests and all those like you know in in yeah. wales and stuff you know so maybe get like hrh and something like that going on then oh, that'd be cool yeah that would be cool very cool all right man. But we'll see Oh, it'll be good to see you whenever you come over, mate. For, for, so I say I'll see you in London, but it'll be good to see you again if you come around again before the year's out. Yeah. Do you go for those like those uh, weird uh, uh, trailer park, you know, festivals? I've done a few of them. Yeah, I've oh, done a few yeah. of them. They're kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, I quite like the fact that you know um, everybody's sort of in it together, and you know, yeah. you know who's gonna. It's quite good fun. Yeah. It's like a big kind of family gathering kind of thing, you know? <laughs> it is, it's all yeah. about music and uh, everybody knows each other and, you know, they've gone there for like years, you know, to see bands and... Yeah, you, know. you get this a lot of, sort of same crowds coming. I've met a lot of good friends that way, you know, just yeah. by, by chatting. Yeah, I like especially those Planet Rock ones, you know, when mm. they have like, you know, that, you know, the crew is somebody we know from like 10 years. So it's so nice to see the, you know, the stage hands and everybody's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> always the same guys. And it's so cool. I like it. I yeah. hope we can do that, you know, by the end of, uh, towards the end of the year. So, yeah, we'll see. That's cool, because I, um, I got my own festival over here called Just Bridge Play, which I set up. Um, okay. I remember my dad, um, I lost my dad to cancer in 2010. And uh, okay. so all the money goes to the hospice. And last, staff so makes bands in a pub, and then it sort of escalated, and we're getting some really cool bands. And we're in uh, the Apex and Berry Fairmans now, which is like 800 capacity venues, so it's sort of grown cool. quite a lot. Um. But yeah, the the techs there are sort of, they're great guys and I've obviously got to know them quite well with them doing my show and all that. And then I was at Winner's End Festival, that say, and thing, and uh, I'm on my way walking out and everybody's walking back to, you know, like you say, like the caravans and all that. And I just said this, all right, Lee. And it was one of the, the stagehands from the Apex. And I'm like, all right, Ben. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was down there working it. So yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. 
That's, when is this? When is the festival? This yours? Uh, this year it's at the end of July. Um, next year I'm at the beginning of August. Okay. Uh, first Saturday in August. Okay, cool. Very cool. So you do that too. You're a promoter. <laughs> yeah, a bit of jack of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's fun. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, you know, when we're in London, come and say hi. You know. Yeah, we'll do, man. I I'm definitely going to be in a crowd. You know, talking to people, and you know, uh, you know, I want to see, I want to see the youngsters play. You know, London. So. Yeah. It's a big thing for them. So. Yeah, cool. And well, yeah, so I'll come say hello. We'll have a beer and we'll have a proper Yeah, chat. definitely. Super. Right. Well, okay. Thanks for your time, Mako, man. It's been great. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Just uh, one more thing before I let you go, mate. At the beginning of the interview, we're going to play Northern Lights off the album because it's one of my okay. favourite songs. Uh, but at the end of the interview, what song off the album would you like us to play? Uh, maybe you should play All of a Sudden You're Gone. Yeah, cool. And just tell people to go and watch the video. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I do like the video for that. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. We'll do that. Thanks for your time, Super. Thank you. Cheers, man. Be in London. Couple be in of London, weeks. man. Okay. Bye, mate. Super.